Let's take a look at maybe uh, big surprise picks, or or yeah. we can keep going with what we thought were biggest picks for for players. Uh, we we did maybe want to touch on uh, some of the some of the first round that we didn't touch on in that first part. Uh, Alisa, what's what's a surprise pick for you maybe here coming out of this first round? I mean, some that we already touched on: Emily Gray going number three overall to North Carolina uh, out of Virginia Tech. Not necessarily a true sleeper, I'm going to say, but I was a little surprised she went this high. We already touched on her, so I am going to give some love to another player going number eight overall to O.L. Rain. Um, the first surprise that I have for this is that Laura Harvey has been known to trade out of the drafts, and she doesn't trade out of her first pick, and she goes for a pick. So that was my first surprise. <laughs> we we heard Marissa Pilla talking on that. She said 14 times over Laura Harvey's last eight coaches years uh laura harvey has traded out of the draft we did see it later in the draft but because of that um this has to be one of my surprise picks and then uh, not just because of that but also um a player a forward uh zansi kajan out of saint john's university in the big east conference whoop, whoop, always got to give some love there um but she's an international player she comes from budapest hungary and because of that going so high eight overall in the draft says a lot about the skill and the talent that that this type of player has um, for Laura Harvey, especially when you look at her roster that she has at OL Reign, she has a lot of big impact players, Rose Lavelle, Jess Fishlock, Megan Rapino, Megan Rapino, um, players that are going to make an immediate impact and, and keep OL Reign at the top of the table right when 2022 gets started and the season is underway. So because of that, Laura Harvey can look at players that um, have have great bones and have great skill set that are just ready to be a sponge and absorb. Because when you throw a player like uh, Kajan into the mix at OL Reign and she is ready, ready and willing to learn from incredible players, other inter international players like Jess Fishlock, that also helps fit into the mold of OL Reign. Um, but uh, Kajan is a left footed player. She can play with both feet, but having her on the left flank is just incredible. She can score a lot of goals. That's what she did for St. John's. She's just a goal scoring machine. And, and that's what OL Rain needs. And if you can throw that onto the pitch, um, even if she just gets the last 15 minutes of a game, this is a player that can create sparks for a team. Um, so I really loved this pick. It was my surprise pick that I really saw in the first round. Well, first, because Laura Harvey actually drafted it was and then, the real surprise was just that she she made a pick in the first round i mean <laughs> that has to be part of it when you as history goes it is but it's a it. great pick for ol rain frankly great soccer iq uh great decision making her collection and she can score goals creativity in the front line when you throw a mix of all the other players on the ol rain roster this is a recipe for success yeah i'm gonna say that i think for one of my biggest uh Picks. I think maybe I'll just say that it's my biggest winner. I think North Carolina Courage is walking out of this draft day and of this first round specifically as as winners of the draft. I really like how they sort of mapped out and played out and made their selections to sort of go ahead and target each of the areas that they really needed to help bolster, which was really kind of each single line. And popping again, popping my head into the media availability, you had head coach uh, Sarnahas talk about that a little bit, and he actually took a question and said that I don't like the the word rebuild, and maybe it's a, a real little a, a more like a retooling and sort of just a tightening up some things here and there uh, because each of the players – that are going to be involved potentially in these preseasons with North Carolina Courage each have the opportunity to make an impact. And I think they really solidified that with that number six pick overall when they ended up choosing Diana Ordonez out of UVA. A big, big pick. Maybe people thought that she would fall, and she did. But I'm not too mm -hmm. surprised to see her go within the first round, even within the top 10 of the first 12 picks, uh, because this is a player, again, one of these players we were talking about, similarly to me, official sort of going uh, going pro early and coming off of a really, really solid collegiate junior year with uh, UVA as well. Somebody who has absolutely racked up some records. You're talking, I think she had like eight or something uh, or so type of game winning type of goals mm -hmm. uh, to go along with the 18 that she scored throughout the season. So, I mean, she is going into the NWSL red hot. I think it was a massive pickup for the courage. And I think after they made that pick to sort of kind of close out uh, the middle of their 
the middle of their first round and then to sort of pick up a defender to close out their first round completely, they went midfielder forward and defender. I was like, they, they won, they, they, yeah. they won, they won their draft. So I think there was a, a real big uh, su success there. And I think, I think maybe a little bit of a surprise pick for, for me could be the, the current pick in, in, in Elise Bennett. I, I'm not too mm -hmm. sure if folks saw uh, Elise Bennett going as high as she did for Kansas city coming out of, uh, Washington state. Uh, and I think that it, maybe it, it caught people off a little bit. Uh, but I think one of the biggest things that was sticking out for, for that particular player that they noticed how tall she was. And they said that this is a, this is a forward <laughs> who's, who's going to be clearly a sort of a central target perhaps for, for the current moving forward. Uh, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of different areas where you could sort of look at and say like, Oh, who were, who was the biggest, uh, biggest winners. And then maybe who wore some of the, the biggest surprises. I mean, maybe another, not so much su surprise, but maybe um, just to sort of give an overview of the draft is, is another angle that came into this is that there were a few teams that didn't have a single selection until deep into the, yeah. into the second rounds, right? Lisa uh, Portland Thorns not getting on the clock and Chicago Red Stars not getting on the clock until the second round even started. Yeah, that was uh, uh, not totally surprising knowing how well both of these teams did um, in the 2021 season. Um, but uh, Sandra, I want to touch on the fact that you mentioned North Carolina being the winners of this. I agree. They they did a great job picked it, picking who they wanted and who really works well for them. It was almost like they put on their horse blinders and whoever they needed, they weren't caring what other teams were going to pick. They needed what they needed for their team, and that's exactly what they did. And I think that kind of goes to show with picking Emily Gray third overall for North Carolina. That's the type of player they needed. Why are they going to wait and sleep on her? Grab her while you can before any other teams do. Um, but it, yes, teams like Portland Thorns, Chicago Red Stars, not getting picks in the first round. But Portland Thorns starting off round two of the NWSL draft. They had the 13th overall pick. They went with a, um, a forward in Sydney Nicello. Um, she's out of of SO Florida. She is a Florida native as well. Now going literally diagonally across the country to Portland Thorns. Um, and when you look at a team like Portland Thorns, they are now without Mark Parsons. Uh, he, he is gone from his empire at Portland Thorns, but Portland Thorns is still a club that is dynamite club that they know how to win. They know how to develop players. Um, they have a good system going for them with Rain Wilkinson and then Karina LeBlanc stepping in as GM. Um, but this is a, a good pick for Portland Thorns going with a forward because remember, they just lost Simone Charlie and Tyler Lucy, uh, two players that can score goals and be big threats up top for the Thorns. Still have Morgan Weaver getting in there though. Um, but I, I do like this pick from Portland Thorns. And then Sandra, your Chicago Red Stars, they did not have a pick until later in this draft, late deep into the second round. And then they went back to back <laughs> yeah there was two picks back to back for chicago and and it was there were jokes uh flying about it because it, it i think my initial reaction was like oh that's right it's like when it's it, it's a part of of the draft where chicago red stars when they make any type of draft selections it's a moment for mid schools in the midwest <laughs> to really kind of shine a little bit yeah. get, get a little bit of light shed on it but they ended up going with ava cook out of michigan state and midfielder uh sammy fisher out of uh notre dame so you're talking about michigan right indiana for 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 uh for for notre dame and it, it wasn't too too shocking and i know even deeper into their round uh they ended up going with a uh, Sarah Griffith out of a uh, Purdue, so a Boilermaker for them, and also a Chicagoland native, uh, deep into the third round or so. So, uh, not too shocking, right? It, it's sort of funny how it's like we're looking at this draft and how things have maybe changed a little bit. Like, oh, Laura Hari picking in the first round of a draft, but then some things actually kind of stay the same. And unshockingly, the Chicago Red Stars stood in the Midwest and also with a Chicagoland area kid. So, and it's funny how some things are different and some stay the same. 